Welcome back to Red Travel with me, Steph. We have a very exciting show lined up for you. We're starting the day zipping through the forest with Zip It Forest Adventure. We're then heading to Crookstown and going on a trek with Lee Valley Equestrian Centre. And then we're trying something completely different. We're meeting Dorothy who's going to bring us on a buffalo farm tour. On the second half of the show, we're going to be telling you everything you need to know about backpacking. We're going to meet Amy and Brefney who have been there and done it and they're going to share their experiences and all their insider tips. So, welcome to Red Travel. at Zippet Forest Adventure. We're about to go meet Philip now who has a morning packed of adventure for us. So let's go meet him. Hi Philip, how How's are you? Going? Not too bad, how are you? <laughs> Thanks for having us today. That's no problem at all. Firstly, what is Zippet? So Zippet is a highway or a forest adventure park. It's a place where people can come and enjoy the forest, and enjoy the nature, get out, zip around, experience it in a completely different way than they've experienced it before. Something here for everybody. People just get excited, get some thrills, maybe a bit of fear for some people. It's all part <laughs> of it. for me. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you have planned for us today? So what we'll do is we'll probably get your harness up there now in two minutes. Um, we'll probably take you out then maybe train you up for 20 minutes so you can get used to the clips and the harness. We'll take you out probably in one of the medium courses, so the orange course, and then we might see how you get on with that and shoot you up to one of the bigger courses then after that. Okay, my legs are already shaking with that. <laughs> Fill us in a little bit about the levels for different age groups. Yeah, yeah, so the smallest course we have is the green course. It's quite low to the ground. It then works up. Every course gets higher and harder as you move along, so it goes to orange, white, blue and red, then our two highest courses. So you might have to give me a push if I were yeah, on the blue one. <laughs> we'll start you low and we'll see how you get on yeah. then after that. <laughs> Brilliant. And for, I suppose, families coming here yeah. as well, what age do you have to be to go on the course? So the youngest we can take is seven years of age. They get to do the green course and we give you four hours to do it so they can do that green course as many times as they want in the four hours. So 15 euros for, this, for anybody that's seven years of age to eight years of age. Uh, it moves on then to the orange course. You have to be nine to do that and also the white would be 9 to 11 to do that as well. That's 23 euros for them. Um, it goes on to the blue which would be 12 for, that is 25 for the, anybody that's 12 years of age and if you're 15 years of age and over you can do the red and that's 30 euros. And if someone wants to book, how do they book? Yes, yeah, so we run on a, off an online booking system. People go to the www.zip.ie webpage. They can book on there. So will we get going and head on the course? Yeah, let's do it. And let's hope I, <laughs> I don't get too frightened. It's okay, no problem. <laughs> So, after a safety demonstration with Philip, it was time to head out on the orange course. I may have started a little shaky, okay, very shaky, but I soon found my balance. So we're just finished the orange course and we're about to go tackle the blue course. The blue course was full of obstacles and challenges and a surprise around every corner, ending with a leap of faith at the very end. So we did it! We zipped through the courses and now it's time to head on to our next location, horse riding in Crookstown. So to zip through the forest, head over to zipit.ie and book your adventure now. We've arrived at Lee Valley Equestrian Centre and we're about to go meet Karen now who's going to bring us on a trek. So let's go. Hi Karen, how are you? I'm not too bad <laughs> this blustery day. I know, thank you very much for having us today. No problem. So what will we be doing? I'm not the most experienced horse rider now so you might have a bit of a challenge on your hands. Oh, uh, you're okay. <laughs> we're going to just go on a, a little trek. We're going to go out to the woods and maybe out to the bog. We'll, we'll see how far we get out there. And we have inexperienced riders all the time, often people who have never ridden before. Brilliant. 
So we have a lot of nice quiet horses. This is Gizmo. Hey, Gizmo. Gizmo is 20 years old and he will take good care of you. So you don't have to worry about him doing much of anything wrong. So <laughs> That's what I like, someone, a horse that'll take care of me as well. <laughs> Brilliant. So will we head out on the trek? We will do that. First, we'll go ahead and put the helmet on you. Brilliant. There okay. we go. There we go. <laughs> helmet. both for taking me out today <laughs> and thanks a million for the trek it was really wonderful it was brilliant um, so if someone was to do a trek like we did today um, how old would you have to be to do it they have to be able to steer and stop the horse yeah. on their own and follow instructions well so most of the time it'd be nine or ten years old on up now if we're doing lessons we have we start with a tiny shots program and we have kids as long as young as four years old. Oh wow, that's very young, yeah. isn't it? So but that's that's them. their ponies would be led. They would be in the arena yeah. for the most part, and, and and they're so young then. They're like sponges. They I are. suppose they probably just take to it so well, like at that age. They they do. It's a lot easier. The younger you are, the better it is because yeah. they don't have as many preconceived notions and yeah. their bodies aren't set in their ways <laughs> like me. yeah us mature people have a little bit harder time anybody can learn at any age but it's a lot easier when you're younger yeah. and then prices as well if someone was to come how much would they be talking for all the different i suppose the tiny tots up to the treks up to the lessons yes it starts at for the tiny tots those are half an hour lessons and they start at 15 euros That's um nice and then we for group lessons an hour-long group lesson would start at 25 euros that's for, for group lessons now we have private lessons as well we do different treks as well we have the one that you went on which is more geared for beginners and goes down through the woods and the bog and it's just walking yeah and that um, was a great experience <laughs> i'm glad you enjoyed it those treks are hour-long treks and they're 35 euros um, we also have longer treks we have one that we do that's called the heritage hack where it's it's nearly an all-day thing it'd take four to five hours we hack into an area that has a, a castle in the middle of the river and a lovely old bridge and lots of history in the area um and then we'd hack over to may Fitz's and we'd stop at the pub there and have a bite to eat and then we'd hack back so um but that's that's not the best for someone who's never ridden before you'd yeah, probably you'd have to be, be a bit experienced got off at the but end of the day I'd but say, it's lovely yeah i'd say it'd be a, a brilliant day if someone wants to book these would they book through would they go onto the website or what way? The best thing is to ring us. Can I give you a phone number? Yeah, you can. It's, it's 085 141 5555. That's the easiest okay. way. Yeah. But we also have our webpage, which is Lee Valley Equestrian Center, C E N T R E dot I E. And we have a Facebook page, which is quite active, and you can message us on the Facebook page as well. Brilliant. So thanks a million, and we better head on to our next location, but okay. we most definitely will be back again. All right, thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks very Bye -bye. much. Bye-bye. <laughs> for more information about all the classes and treks, head over to leevalleyequestriancentre.ie. So we're here at the McCroom Buffalo Farm. And we're about to meet Kieran and Dorothy now, who are going to take us on a trip through the farm. So let's go meet them. So thanks a million for having me today. Um, I'm really excited to do the, the tour. Mm. So tell us a little bit, I suppose there's four things involved in the tour. Yeah. So fill yeah. us in a little bit about what yeah. we'll be doing. Well, I meet you here at the gate, the farm gate, and we give a brief introduction here to the cheese factory behind us, because there's all one spot in the parlours over here. The nicest thing to do first is to meet the calves. Um, they're indoor at the moment, so there's about 35 calves there. And a, a nice introduction to the young, the young buffalo. To that already. Yeah, <laughs> they're really adorable. Um, so I can give you a, a little history there of, of the breed, really, and the species. And then we go off down to the fields because they're on in the paddocks, you know, at the moment. And I'll introduce you to the, tr the teenagers that are there. They're about six months old. They're very giddy and a good bit of fun. We pass them at the labour ward, as we call it, where the impending mothers are waiting to give birth. 
calves are born here all year round. Um, and then down to the fields, down around the Toon Valley. It's about an hour's tour really all, all in, just to the fields. And so there's been a nice bit of fresh air, a little bit of information, something extremely unique to look at and to meet, the Irish water buffalo. We, at the end of the tour then, there's viewing windows behind the cheese plant here so you can see the cheese being made and just see the product range we have. And then we bring you into the lovely room here in the back, which is a Swiss chalet. And you'll taste the cheese. Brilliant. Yeah. And Kieran, I suppose you've learned a lot from your dad and you're involved in the tour as well. So you give your kind of the family knowledge on it as yeah. well. Yeah. So if someone was to book the tour, where do they book? We can be contacted on our Facebook page and our phone number is 026 41907 Perfect. for anyone who's not on Facebook. So if you ring that number, you can And book. the website, yeah, McCroom Buffalo yeah. Cheese. Yeah. And it would be um, 10 people or more, ten you would take more. a group. So, yeah, so you can ring and book in and yeah, be yeah, in a group yeah, or yeah. be put into the next yeah. group that's going out yeah. as well. So it's 160 for groups of 10 to 20. And then from 20 to 40, it's 200. So it's averaging out about five or six euros ahead, you know, give or take. And yeah. a lovely thing to do. It's nice Something and relaxing. And it's a nice introduction to this lovely part of West Cork. So we're going to get a little mini tour today uh, just yeah. to get a little yeah, taste yeah, of it. Yeah. So will we go ahead and yeah, check it out? Yeah, Perfect. Okay. So we're out with the buffaloes now and um, I suppose we're learning a lot about them and hearing all the stories from you, Kieran. You've grown up with them yeah. as you've gone. Um, so tell us a little bit about that and how you got attached to them. Um, well, when we brought them in in 2009 first, there was only 31 of them, so I was able to get to know each one of them really well. And it was easy to tell them apart because their heads and horns were different shapes than each other mm. and as the herd grew I was just able to tell each one then because yeah. of the, how little the herd was at the start. And do you have a favourite one? I do yeah, there's one there, Black Beauty, she was in Aldi's ad on TV. Oh yeah, um, we saw Johnny up on him, but yeah. like, we saw you there while I go oh, up yeah. on him. Yeah. Johnny was only, well it was, Kieran was training her you see, oh, so I think, he was, I think you were behind he all that. He was behind yeah. the training, yeah. training yeah. to be, yeah. be able to do yeah, that. Yeah absolutely yeah. 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 This buffalo here is the smartest one on the farm. She's able to open gates in the parlour when she's done her food so she can walk out. She's able to open gates with her tongues and her horn and even her tail when she wants to. We're, we're calving all year round so there will always be calves what, no matter what time of year yeah. there's a tour on. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> that's the selling point. <laughs> So, Dorothy, we're on the tasting part yeah, of tasting the tour part of it, now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about, I suppose, the cheeses that you make here on site. Yeah, well, we make 100% buffalo, Irish buffalo milk, the mozzarella. The uh, buffaloes are milked here. The milk comes into the parlour, into the dairy, and it's made into mozzarella balls. Uh, and we also make a smaller one as well called boccaccini. And another byproduct is ricotta. Um, so, every bit of the cheese is used. And we have 10 staff working here. There's two master cheesemakers, Sean Ferry, and his his assistant is Dan McCarthy and Johnny Lynch as well the main man knows how to make it too yeah. um, and we Good. pack it and it's it's um, shipped out then from the farm every day and where can you buy it then you can buy it in Aldi and in Super Value and Centra and Dunn yes. stores and you can buy it in the English market in Omani's in the English market and lots of restaurants around and you know just ask for McCroom buffalo mozzarella brilliant but well, I'm looking forward to yeah, tasting it now. I hope you enjoy it yeah <laughs> <laughs> for an experience to remember pay a visit to McCroom buffalo farm so it's time to say slán from McCroom buffalo farm and coming up on the show we're going to be filling you in on all the insider tips for backpacking so stay tuned if you've any top tips or favourite destinations, be sure to share a photo or a video with us over on our Twitter, Instagram or Snapchat at Red Travel Show and we will pick some of our favourites to feature on the show. So this week we're chatting all about big travel adventures and backpacking tips. Many of you might be heading off on a year-long adventure or you could be heading off for a few weeks or if you're lucky a few months. So we're going to be sharing all our top tips, how to get there, where to go and we're going to be joined by Amy and Brittany here who are going to fill us in on their experiences, their adventures and they're going to share all the insider tips. So thanks a million for joining us today girls. Amy do you want to tell us a little bit about your backpacking trip? Yeah, so um, I went away for four months from January to May and we did Southeast Asia. 
So went to Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos and Thailand. Oh wow. So we flew from Dublin to London, London to Hanoi in Vietnam um, with Malaysia Airlines and they were absolutely spectacular, they were brilliant to fly with. And we kind of our first three nights booked in Vietnam and that was it. So apart from that we didn't know what we were doing or where we were going. When you were organising it, did you book it all yourself or did you go through a company? We kind of looked, we looked at booking it ourselves and it's just we knew we weren't 100% sure when we wanted to come home. So we knew we might want to change our flight so for that reason we went with USIT. Um, we tried a few different places with USIT with the, the most competitive and they were just really easy to deal with. Um, and it turned out we did change our flights kind of a few months in so it was just sent them an email, they changed the flights for us, it was all very easy. Very good. So, yeah. And if you're going away on a trip like this, I suppose a lot of people are like, okay, how much would I have to have saved first? And like in your experience, how much would you kind of need for going away? So for Southeast Asia, I did because I read kind of a lot of blogs and a lot of research of what I need to bring for kind of money. Approximately a thousand euro a month, and that was to do it very well. That included all our travel within Asia. We did, we didn't fly anywhere, but it was all boats, trains, buses, all our food, all our accommodation, and a good, good few activities. And that was to do it comfortably. It's very reasonable, isn't it? Like, yeah. That's, do that's doable. It is, it is very doable. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think. I You'll see me on a flight now <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> that's it in Asia, and you could, you could definitely do it cheaper if you wanted. You can work out there if you wanted to save a bit of money. Like, there's so many options, definitely with Southeast Asia anyway. So. Yeah. And if you were to do it all again, what would you do differently? I honestly don't think. I'd just go for longer. I really don't think I'd change a thing. I'd yeah. probably be a bit more laid back. Um, I like to have things planned and that's just not something you should do when you're over there so yeah. I like to know where I'm going next or where I'm staying next and I just had to get out of that mentality because it's, it's just yeah. it's not the way to do so it over you, there. So you didn't have a, like you had maybe your first few nights planned and Literally then the first few nights booked from there. and that was it and yeah. that's definitely definitely the best way. And I suppose when you're it. over there there might be group tours and things like that did you find there was there, a lot of that when you were there? It's all talking to people yeah. you get so much recommendations from people you can you hear about places you never even knew existed you could do all the research you want and you just won't find out yeah. about things yeah um so yeah definitely there's no point it's not a, tour, a trip that you should book your weeks in advance yeah because you stumble upon hostels you stumble upon hotels and that's just they're some of the best experiences we had yeah. and Brefney you're always traveling <laughs> <laughs> so every time I look I see Brefney on social media she's always in a new place so where has been your favorite place um, definitely Bali in Indonesia I adored and I am just back from a trip in Sri Lanka and it was amazing where did you book did you book through an agency booked it all through Skyscanner and um, all of our accommodation was pretty much Airbnb the whole way um, Skyscanner and Airbnb I half my tri trips wouldn't be possible without them and if you had top tips say first for a Bali what would they be um, for Bali it would definitely be go off season um, so the best time to visit Bali is in October you get the best weather and the least tourists um, I'd stay out of like the Seminyak and the, the Kutas, like the real touristy spots and go straight for the Gili Islands, go straight for Ubud. And for Sri Lanka, where would you...? For Sri Lanka, um, I'd say decide if you're going to go north or south. Um, it's a tiny country, the same size as Ireland, but the roads are so bad that it takes hours to get anywhere. Um, so you need to really decide what you're going to do. Um, Elephants, um, going on safari to see the elephants was huge for us. Um, we also wanted to go to Kandy, um, but we wanted to head down the coast um, and do kind of some surfing and some yoga and some Ayurveda massages and things like that. So we kind of decided the five things we wanted to do and then worked our plan around that. And then price wise, like if you were going to Bali, oh, how much would you have to have saved up for, for that experience? Yeah, so for we did um, a two, a two week holiday that we stayed in the most amazing places that were like four or five star places um, and we spent about a grand and a half. Sri Lanka you'd be looking about the same yeah so if you're doing I think I think you're right that if you're doing a month then you about a grand a month but if you're only going for two weeks and you still want to see elephants and you still want to get everything like what you'd nearly get done in a month but shoved into two weeks I yeah. think you need about a grand spending on, yeah. on accommodation and spending money and then you're looking at about 500 for flights. Um, pack light, definitely don't bring makeup, don't bring hair straighteners, it's not worth it. Embrace the backpacking culture and just enjoy. 
few pairs of shorts, a few tank tops, and a few loose dresses because it's so hot, and flip flops. No heels, no wedges, <laughs> literally. Leave the straighteners at home. Yeah, <laughs> leave it all at home because you're lugging that backpack everywhere with you and you're just, you're not gonna need it. I wish I'd packed differently. So, um, talk to people, talk to everyone in hostels, in your dorm, get recommendations. There's some of the best places we found were from recommendations. Um, like we found a coconut beach in Cambodia, which we'd never heard of, just from talking to guys in a hostel. And it was the most amazing place I've ever been to in my life. It was absolutely spectacular. So take recommendations from people. Um, keep a diary or keep a journal or just keep something as a memorabilia. Backpacking anyway, haggle. haggle. Don't take the first price ever oh in Southeast God, I, Asia. I'm so bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> I was too, it actually horrified me for the first while. But like, never take the first price. In Southeast Asia, because okay. you have to break with them. Yeah, very good. And briefly, um, I would say buy yourself a GoPro if you're going anywhere with water, and um, buy yourself a pair of Birkenstocks. They're the best shoes yes. you will ever buy. <laughs> like, just leave the other kind of the cheaper flip flops behind. <laughs> um, I would say go into deals and get yourself the mosquito bands. They are the best mosquito bands. So there you have it. All the insider tips from Amy and Breffney. All I want to do now is book a flight and go. So that's it for this week. Coming up next week, we're heading to Tato Park, where we're going to be sharing everything you need to know before your big trip. And of course, we're going to test out a few of the rides for you. We're also going to be trying something completely different and heading glamping with Rock Farm Slane. In the second half of the show, we're going to be bringing you across the water to the US of A, sharing our top things to do in the windy city of Chicago. So tune in next week to Red Travel. Get peace of mind with low-cost AIG travel insurance plus 10% discount online.